do this weekly for about 50 minutes so where we take time to talk about one of the faculty will present a topic uh, for about 15 to 20 minutes and then after that we get an opportunity to ask questions um, and it can be about the topic primarily or it can be about any of the subjects that we are learning or it could be anything that um, that is of interest to you uh, from the Bible and from what is happening in your own lives uh, with regard to uh, your spiritual walk so um, so that is what we do in our mentoring hour so um, yeah, so we'll get started, and um, I just want to ask uh, maybe one one person to pray, um, and then we'll get started. So anyone can pray, and we'll we'll get started. Um, would anyone like to pray? Probably Sanjay or Nikhil or yeah, Sanjay. Yeah. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Heavenly Father, we would just like to thank you for this uh, hour of mentoring, Father. We pray that uh, as we learn from your word and as we learn something new, Father, that we'll be able to apply this in our lives, Father. Let thy, let thy word speak to us today, Father. And uh, we pray, Lord, for a blessing upon the entire faculty and a blessing upon all the students in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sanjay. Um, so today we have uh, Pastor Selina Makwana. Um, and uh, Pastor Selina will be sharing uh, on the topic Christian unity. And after that, uh, we'll open this time for questions. So over to Pastor Selina. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, good morning, everyone. Just like to very briefly share on uh, Christian unity this morning. Uh, so, is Christian unity important? What do you all think? Is Christian unity important? Yes, no? Any replies? Yes. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Thank you, Joseph. Yes, it's important. Uh, so, why is Christian unity important? Uh, we'll just look at um, uh, three uh, uh, factors, just three important uh, reasons why Christian unity is important. Firstly, we see, uh, you know, Jesus mentions about unity thrice in his uh, prayer to the Father in John chapter 17. John chapter 17 is a high priestly prayer of uh, Jesus the night, just the night before he was uh, crucified. And so we uh, read in John chapter 17, verses 21 uh, to 23, uh, Jesus says in verse 21, he prays in, in verse 21, that they all may be one. He's basically praying for all the believers. So he's praying that we may be one, uh, that they also may be one in us. Uh, verse 22, he's, he prays that they may be one just as we are one. And in verse 23, he's praying to the Father, um, saying that, you know, that we may be made perfect in one. So uh, Jesus' desire is that those who believe in him, uh, you know, are united, are one in him, uh, just as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, and that, you know, uh, we are made perfect in this unity. So that is the first reason why Christian unity is important. The second reason that I think Christian unity is important is uh, because of what Christ did uh, on the cross, the finished work on the cross. Uh, and when he, he died on the cross, he secured unity for all of us. And uh, we see in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, uh, you know, Paul is writing uh, to the churches at Ephesus and he's very concerned about the unity among the Jews and Gentiles. And he also is discussing in this chapter about the maturity in the body of Christ. In verses 13, 14, um, and 16, Paul mentions, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. 
and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the en enmity. So the work of Jesus on the cross is the common ground of salvation for both Jews and Gentiles, and therefore there is no longer any dividing wall between the Jew and Gentile, and Jesus broke down this wall. So Paul is mentioning this to the church, and um, we also know that Christ's finished work on the cross not only brought about unity between God and mankind, or God and humanity, but also unity among people of all races. And we read this in Galatians chapter 2, verse 28, uh, that, you know, where Paul is saying that we are all one in Christ Jesus, and in Christ there is no Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female. Romans chapter 12 verse 5 says, so in Christ though we are many form one body. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 says, for in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. So we are all one in Christ. And uh, this unity is what Jesus secured for us on the cross when he died on the cross. Um, and completed the work that uh, he had he was sent by the father the third reason why i think uh, christian unity is important is uh, because it's a key part of our testimony as believers in the lord jesus to the world uh, in paul's day you know the divide between the jews and gentiles was really great was huge and uh, it was paul's desire just like it was jesus desire that if the church could display to the world the unity between the Jews and Gentiles, that which Christ has secured on the cross, it would be a powerful uh, witness. And that is why he, he writes, uh, you know, most of his letters at Paul, Apostle Paul is writing the churches. He's, he's talking a lot about unity and oneness. And we see that even Jesus states this as well in John chapter 17, verses 20 and 23, we looked at this uh, verse in the beginning, uh, you know, where Jesus says, you know, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they also may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Verse 22, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as you have, um, uh, sorry, as uh, sent me and loved them as you have loved me. So here we see that, you know, uh, uh, Jesus knew that if there was unity and oneness among the believers, you know, it would lead others um, uh, to believing the gospel that uh, they were preaching and also would result in people putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, believing in him and also believing that the Father has sent uh, Jesus Christ. So uh, these are the three reasons which I would state, uh, uh, you know, why Christian unity is important. Of course, there are various other important reasons, but I've just mentioned um, these three. Uh, before we look at what is Christian unity, I would just like to mention what Christian unity is not. Uh, Christian unity is not denominational unity. Uh, we we uh, read in John chapter 17, we don't read anywhere in John chapter 17 that, you know, Christ was praying for one world church organized uh, under one leader and church government, but he was just praying for unity and oneness and peace among the uh, believers. So Christian unity is, uh, when we, we talk about Christian unity, uh, I don't mean, you know, denominational unity, where we're saying that, you know, uh, there should be one world church um, organization um, under one leader and church government. Also, Christian unity is not doctrinal unity. You know, we can have... Uh, uh, come from different denominations with different doctrines. Um, but having said that, we need to be very careful uh, 
because when we're saying that even if we are from different uh, denominations that uh, uh, teach different doctrines, um, but it's important that, you know, we come together as one and that our foundation is the same. Uh, we are building our unity on the same foundation, uh, which means we are building our, um, our unity on the essential truths that become our strong foundation. And what are these essential truths that we need to believe on? Is uh, that all of us believe on the inspiration and the authority of scripture, uh, the Trinity, the full divinity and humanity of Jesus Christ, uh, his substitutionary death on the cross, his bodily resurrection, his bodily second coming and salvation by grace through faith alone and not by works. So these are the common uh, essential truths which can become our common foundation uh, that we can come together. Uh, so it's very important when we say that Christian unity is not doctrinal unity, doesn't mean that, you know, we encourage all um, heretical teachings and teachings that are not aligned with the word of God. But these are some of the essential truths that we can, uh, if we all believe on, can become the common foundation that we can come together um, and, uh, you know, further uh, the kingdom of God in uh, the city and in our nation. Christian unity is also not uniformity. Uh, uh, by this, I mean, you know, not uniformity in the, the form, style and expression of worship. Uh, so we can have different, come from different backgrounds, which have different uh, styles and forms and expressions of worship. But uh, we can still come together and meet together and, uh, you know, uh, to build and further the kingdom of God in our city and nation. So having said what Christian unity is not, uh, we will look at what then is Christian unity. Uh, I like to define Christian unity, uh, you know, with, uh, with what Paul uh, says or states in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. So I like to go with what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. He says, there is one body and one spirit, as just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. So Christian unity is basically all of us coming together, being united uh, in our um, uh, belief that, you know, we are all part of one body, which is the church, which is the body of Christ. Okay, so we all belong uh, to Christ. And uh, uh, I already have mentioned these verses in Galatians chapter 2, verse 28, and Romans 12, 5, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Uh, where we are all one in Christ Jesus. So, you know, when we become, we are born again, when we, be, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we all are part of the body of Christ. We are all one in um, Christ Jesus. So, you know, that is what is uh, causes the unity and oneness in us. And the other thing is, uh, you know, that we are under the submission and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And, um, uh, we are all seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness um, and his will to be done in our city. So it's our prayer that, you know, uh, his kingdom come and his will be done in our city and in our um, nation. So this is what we, uh, what I basically mean when I'm talking about Christian uh, unity, that we are all, even though we are from different backgrounds, different denominations, come from different styles of worship, uh, you know, but we are all part of the body of Christ and we are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and we have one God um, and Father um, and one Lord Jesus Christ and one Holy Spirit and we all believe in one, uh, you know, the, the, uh, Bible, uh, which uh, is the basis for our faith and our doctrine. And so that forms the basis for our uh, Christian unity and our oneness. So um, is Christian, uh, is achieving Christian unity easy? What do you all think? Is achieving Christian unity easy? Yes, no, maybe, or it's impossible. It's challenging, yes. What do the others think? 
I think if you basically ask, uh, you know, uh, people if is Christian achieving Christian unity uh, uh, easy, the you know, uh, the unanimous response would be a resounding no. It's not easy, right? Um, but yes, it like Sanjay says, it is necessary. It is challenging. Uh, but Christian unity is a high call and a hard call. And in fact, it uh, sometimes seems impossible uh, apart from the help of the Holy uh, Spirit. Uh, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, yes, we can be united. And that is why, you know, Jesus even prayed about this in the high priestly prayer in John chapter 17 to the Father. So what should we do as believers, you know, to maintain uh, Christian unity? Um, just quickly look at some passages and close. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so what should we do as believers to maintain Christian unity? Uh, Romans chapter 14 verse 19 says, you know, we need to pursue things which make up for peace. Uh, some other translations say, you know, uh, we need to aim for, follow after, make every effort or keep on pursuing. So it's it's not easy, but we keep on uh, following after it, make every effort, aim for it, uh, keep on pursuing peace and the things which uh, one may edify and other. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verses uh, 2 and 3 says, you know, we need to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love, and make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So we make every effort uh, to keep the unity of the Spirit, to be united, even though it seems uh, difficult, we bear with each other, we put up with each other, and it requires us to be completely humble and gentle and patient, bearing with one another in love. Colossians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 says, Bear with each other, you know, forgive one another, uh, forgive as the Lord has forgiven us, and over all these virtues put on um, love. So it's important that we love, lo love not when it's convenient, not when it's easy, when it's, um, uh, you know, even when we disagree, when we agree. Um, and, uh, you know, not just when it's convenient for us, but love at all times and pursue uh, love as well. So here it says, you know, um, in um, we need to bear uh, in, in Colossians chapter four, verse three says we need to bear or uh, even in um, sorry, Colossians chapter three, verse 13 says we need to bear with each other. You know, some other translations say we need to put up. We need to tolerate, we need to be patient with one another, and that is what we need to do. Sometimes, you know, uh, to maintain peace and unity in the body of Christ, yes, we need to put up, we need to tolerate, and we need to be patient with uh, one another. Just like to close with Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 and uh, to verse 32, uh, where, you know, Paul is basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, has been talking about, you know, uh, being uh, the Jews and Gentiles being uni uh, united and, and one, and also talking about maturity in the body of Christ. And then he goes on the latter half of that chapter where he says, you know, uh, to uh, keep this unity, we need to put off our old selves. Uh, you know, and we need to put on the new self, which is created in uh, to be like God in true righteousness and um, holiness. And then he says to keep the unity in the, uh, the spirit and to be united, we need to put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. You know, in your anger, do not sin. Verse 26, verse 28 says anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, must work hard. And verse 29 do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. And um, verses 31 and 32, he says, you know, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So <clears throat> all of these things, you know, uh, it's uh, very difficult on our own. But if we are connected to... Uh, uh, we have our intimate relationship with God, you know, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us, works in us, and, you know, we would be able to maintain uh, Christian unity in the body of um, uh, Christ. And it's important for us to keep going back to these uh, verses, uh, to keep finding out areas where we are lacking and, you know, um, do our best to pursue 
and uh, 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 unity and oneness and to bear with each other and to love each other just as Christ loved us. Thank you, everyone. Uh, over to Pastor Jacob. Thank you, Pastor Selina. Thank you for that um, um, presentation on Christian unity. So I just open it up for others. Uh, if you have any questions uh, on what Pastor Selina shared, or uh, any further questions on this topic of unity, maybe you tried uh, at this, you know, worked at unity, and maybe have, uh, some challenges and difficulties, and maybe you have some questions. You know, um, you can go ahead and ask those questions, um, and then um, Pastor Selina and the others will respond. So, yeah, just open this time up. You can either unmute and ask, or you can post your questions on the chat. Um, thank you. Any any questions? Any doubts? Any clarifications? Um, it can be on this topic, or it can be on any other topic as well, some things that you've been learning, um, anything from the Word, anything from you know, your spiritual walk with God. Um, you can go ahead and ask those questions. <clears throat> Good morning, Pastor. Just a thought I wanted to share on... Uh what Christian unity is not. So these three, um, that is denominational unity, doctrinal unity, and, and uniform un uniformity, uh, three things which um, can uh, or most likely brings divisions among uh, believers. So I, 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 I was, uh, I had this, uh, you know, a, a, a thought like, why why are most believers kind of divided i, I noticed these are the three I, I didn't i was not aware of these three things before i heard them today so it kind of it was like an eye opener for me if if we if we if we can steer away from uh, things like de denominational unity or doctrinal unity and uniformity we can focus on the core values or the, the core things which pastor silna shared that keeps us together so if you can just keep our eyes on the or core values and, and stop uh, um what do you say uh, giving too much of importance to the uh, what Christian Christian unity is not, it kind of helps us, you know, uh, build bridges, you know, between others. That's all. Just a thought. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Um, uh, Selena, would you like to respond to that, or um, um, we can move on? Otherwise, I think he just uh, stated what is already mentioned. Mm. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so we have a question from Pratt. It's uh, why do churches have different doctrines or dogmas, even though they all worship Jesus Christ and have one Holy Spirit? Why do churches have different doctrines uh, or dogmas? Um, would anyone like to respond? Um, this request a faculty. Um, Maybe Pastor Ashish, if you if you'd like to respond to this, and others can also add on. Yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of reasons, and uh, maybe uh, when we can make a long list of reasons why uh, you know although we all worship the same Lord and have the same Holy Spirit, uh, we have these differences. I think one is sometimes we have a misplaced, I mean, the one that I would mention is uh, a misplaced emphasis. Uh, that means we are more committed to our denomination or more committed to uh, certain way of doing things than the Word of God and Jesus Christ himself. You know, sometimes I've heard people say, like, you know, I actually heard a person say, you know, I'm a Baptist at heart. 
So it's like, <laughs> I was wondering, I didn't say anything, but it just showed that his commitment is to his denomination rather than to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. So things like that. I, and I, I'm sure we can make a long list of things. Uh, I would just put number one as a misplaced, misplaced commitment or focus. Uh, others can add to it, sure. Um, thank you, Pastor. Would anyone else like to add? Um... Yes, Pastor Jakes, I'd just like to share. I think it's uh, uh, a wrong interpretation of scripture, or the not the right interpretation of scripture or the understanding of uh, a scripture, maybe not interpreting scripture in its uh, right context, in the way why it was written, uh, looking at all the tools necessary for interpretation. So that can lead to, you know, uh, 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 kind of a misunderstanding of what is in scripture and hence, you know, also to different uh, doctrines or also reading too much into it and, uh, you know, put, uh, trying to understand uh, uh, the scripture from their own perspective rather than, you know, uh, in the context that it was written. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Serena. Um, also, I just had a thought about, um, you know, when we study uh, revivals and uh, restorative moves of God, we see that, uh, like, after the dark ages, that God is restoring uh, back to the church some of these key truths that was there in the early church, um, right, starting from the Reformation, uh, about faith, about uh, purity, and, and so on. And we see that, uh, you know, whenever God... Uh, well, restores that maybe raises a person or a group of people to restore the the truth back to the uh, you know we uh, back to the church, back to the body of Christ, the global body of Christ, and then we see that yes, there is that teaching, and then there are um, you know groups of churches formed around that teaching. So nothing wrong in that. Uh, so they are emphasizing that maybe healing and deliverance and so on. But um, we also see that well. In another season, God is bringing back uh, a restorative move uh, and uh, and an emphasis or uh, the truth being restored. And then uh, the ones who who were part of the previous move actually resist, uh, and uh, you know the other uh, truth being restored. So uh, so which means that the church is just parked around that uh, truth or doctrine or emphasis, and then not willing to look at um, the truth being restored you know as a whole uh, and that also causes you know divisions the doctrinal disunity so yeah this could be you know some of these reasons yeah thank you brad for those questions uh, for that question and i hope that was answered um we'll move on to the, another question from zeli she says can you suggest some ways to unify interdenominational and mainline churches uh, like the Catholic Church and so on, some ways to unify. Um, um, so I just open it up. Any practical ways to unify uh, different denominations um, to bring about unity? Uh, thank you, Zelatoli, for your question. Um, I think uh, I just want to understand your question a little uh, better. Are you talking about uh, uh, you know different uh, Protestant denominations and the uh, mainline churches uh, that are Protestant joining along with the Catholic churches? Is that what uh, you're meaning to say, or it's how all of us, whether Protestants or Catholics, can be uh, united? Uh, I just want to know uh, basically how we can unify all the churches. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I think what we can uh, do is, uh, you know, we can come together and organize, uh, you know, if uh, there's been persecution in our city, you know, all of us can come together and uh, pray for uh, uh, for the believers, pray for the churches, you know, we can stand together and help those uh, who are going through persecution. Um, if there is, you know, uh, like uh, at APC once, I remember we, on 15th August, uh, we had organized uh, where all the churches had come together, you know, from different denominations, just all of us coming together, just uh, worshiping God. Uh, 
you know, we just had different uh, uh, songs for worship. We had uh, hymns, we had, uh, uh, you know, contemporary songs, and then we just had uh, uh, someone share from God's word, and then we had people praying for the city. So, you know, we can organize, churches can organize where um, on, you know, 26th January, 15th August, where we can come together and uh, you know uh, meet together as one body as a citywide church just uh, uh, worshiping together praying together also you know uh, if we are um, uh, having uh, programs that um, for example like feeding the poor uh, slum outreach um, equipping uh, believers in the marketplace um, also working for uh, uh, you know marriages and um, um, uh, and other, you know, uh, orphanages and uh, 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 people who are uh, women who are trafficked. Uh, so churches doing these same projects can, you know, uh, work alongside each other, uh, can support each other, can contribute each other, uh, uh, you know, contribute to each other just uh, uh, to help our city to, uh, you know, impact us. I'm sorry, we can't hear Selena. Um, we just lost the audio. Can you just repeat that last line, what you shared, please? Um, I'm sorry, we're not able to hear. Probably you can just check that out and try and fix the audio. Um, um, I just want to add to what Pastor Serena was sharing, like churches coming together and working together. Like, just wanted to say that you know, um, e each church is a uh, you know representation of Christ in that uh, and uh, in that particular geographical location, right? Uh, each local church, so each one has a different or a unique call, a unique uh, you know expression and uh, a unique way to serve that uh, community. So it, that's fine. Um, but the thing is that if we were to you know, work in cross purposes in the sense we are opposing each other and putting down each other. Now that's wrong. So that's why, you know, we're working towards unity. Um, and I, I would say that it starts with the leaders of the churches, uh, where the leaders of the churches uh, have this vision of saying that hey, we need to work together. We cannot view each other with suspicion and uh, we need to build friendships. And so that, um, you know, uh, that can further be transferred to everyone in the church, right? So, so if uh, if we were to communicate that, or if we were to work towards that, uh, if the leaders were to work together with that, and then get together, uh, maybe meet with one another, they can start in a small way, but that would actually help in uh, in the larger body uh, coming together and working together. So it would start with the leaders, right? Okay. Any other thoughts? Um, any practical ways maybe you can work at this? OK, um, there's another question from Pratt. Is there any such thing as spiritual lineage or tribe? Spiritual lineage or tribe? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't really understand that question, Pratt. Spiritual lineage or tribe. If um, any of the pastors, if you understand the terms and that question, um, probably you could answer. Or Pratt, you could clarify. Uh, uh, yeah. I think uh, what he is Pratt is kind of referring to is um, something that we, we see, uh, and especially contemporary in the, in the church, uh, that, that there are actually different streams, just like what you were sharing earlier, uh, you know, about God raising up different uh, leaders who give birth to different movements. And so you naturally have different streams that are emphasizing different aspects of our Christian faith. And generally what happens is communities form around these streams. Uh, now all streams should flow into one river, which is the river of God. 
and uh, we should be drinking of the river of God, which is everything God is releasing in the church. Uh, the problem is uh, that people tend to base their identification on their own particular stream, and they kind of just stay with their own stream rather than drinking from the river. And that's when we have this idea of, you know, I belong to this tribe or I belong to this particular expression of, the Christ of Christian faith. Uh, and each tribe obviously has its own characteristics, its own emphasis. Uh, but then when people feel that, you know, their tribe is better, their tribe is more important, their tribe is their identity, uh, then we get all of these problems. And uh, I mean, which. Uh, they emphasize th that particular lineage, you know, so and so was our spiritual father, and so and so was, you know, whatever, father of the movement, etc., and so on. And, and I think it kind of gets back to the, what the emphasis of today is uh, the unity that we need to maintain. Uh, it is true that there are different manifestations, expressions of the Holy Spirit, but because he is one spirit. We should all drink of that same spirit and learn to receive from one another and enjoy the emphasis that God is releasing through different people. And that should be our response, I think. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. That was good. Um, so we have another question from Joseph. Um, uh, Pratt, I hope the, the that response was helpful. Um, so the next question is from Joseph. What should be done for those who are running home churches, house churches, and have no one to support them, uh, how to unite them. Okay. Um, again, just wanted to um, add that, uh, you know, just I just want to share that, okay, when we're talking about unity, um, uh, we're not saying that, you know, uh, I need to conform to a particular organization or I need to sign up under a, come under an umbrella, right? Uh, we're not saying that. We're just saying that, um, you know, that we have the sense of being oneness, being one. You know, we have the sense of being part of the kingdom of God, right? We are part of the kingdom. It might be different churches, different expressions, uh, but we are part of the kingdom. So that is what we're saying, right? So if it's a house church, um, well, that's what God has called um, that pastor and that leadership team uh, well they continue to be faithful there right they continue to fa be faithful in serving in that manner but have friendships have fellowship with others as well with the larger body of christ maybe with the leaders and and so on so like we shared earlier if the leaders could you know get together or have these times together or you know when we have these city-wide uh, you know, let's say events, you know, for want of a better word, citywide events like maybe a prayer uh, event or a worship event or you know, something that brings the citywide churches together, you know, to be to be part of that, to participate, to help and, you know, and that would that would really um, create that sense of oneness. We are part of the same body and uh, we're not putting down any other denomination or church. We're working towards the same goal. Okay, I hope that helps. Any other, uh, any others would like to add to what Joseph has asked? You can please go ahead. Okay, All right, Joseph. So, um, yeah. Any other questions on unity? Maybe you can even share, uh, you know, if you've if you've tried something, or uh, maybe some success stories of, you know, uh, bringing about a body of believers together. You can work at that. I know we were talking about different, uh, you know, denominations and so on. But what about, you know, within the local church itself, right? Um, uh, to to bring about. Um, you know, an end to strife or division. So if there are any success stories, if there's any learnings right, um, or any questions on that, you could share that, you can ask that also.
Um, are you all busy typing questions? Or uh, okay, we have about ten minutes. Just want to remind us about the time. So, if you have any questions, you could ask, uh, or any learnings to share uh, on this topic. Also, you're welcome to do that, or any other questions. You know, any other questions that you have, um, you can ask now. Uh, hello, Pastor. I just wanted to share something. Uh, it's not uh, particularly aligned to what you stated just now. So I was just thinking about maintaining that sense of unity, uh, especially when we come together with people of other denominations um, and you know people who believe in a different doctrine. Uh, I think in those moments, and it happens all the time, especially like family gatherings and, you know, when you meet up with friends. So it's uh, good to, uh, like, you know, it, it's good, as Pastor Selena shared about uh, being gentle and humble and kind, uh, you know, with, with other brothers and sisters to, to really put on that attitude and not uh, bring up those matters of contention um, and just sort of maintain that that sense of peace at all times uh, and, and you know not make it about my church and my doctrine and this is what I believe so uh, even that you know, really helps uh, as brothers and sisters when when we come together in various settings so I was just thinking about that one simple point you know, and wanted to share that thank you um, thank you, Pastor Nancy. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's very helpful that we put on that cloak of humility and also not try to elevate uh, one denomination over other or one pastor over another and and uh, you know uh, kind of share uh, something with an air of superiority uh, that definitely uh, you know loses the audience and also creates so much of division. Yeah, that's very true. Yes. Um, I was also reminded of you know certain ministers of God who I mean, God has really called them for the you know the larger body of Christ, irrespective of what denomination. Uh, maybe it could be a worship leader. It could be a you know everybody comes together, and and uh, and these are some qualities that we see that they elevate Christ and they say and they keep true to the what is core of it all. You know uh, about Jesus, about the cross, about the Word of God, and uh, and then it's it's uh, it's so you know, refreshing, and people also come together. We know that you know there could be different division, different uh, you know differences, and so on. But still, people want to gather around because around Jesus right? and the Word and the true worship, and so on. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, so um, Nikhil, I think, put his hand up. Um, Nikhil, would you like to? Ask a question. Okay. So, uh, any other questions? Any other thoughts? Anything that you would like to share? Um, okay, that was a mistake. Okay, Nikhil. Right. If there are no more questions, um, we could uh, bring this to a close. Uh, bring the session to a close and then continue with our classes. Um, so if there are any questions, you know, one last question, um, anyone? Otherwise, we'll pray and close. OK. OK, no further questions. Um, just wanted to remind us about uh, uh, mentoring sessions happening on Thursday so you know you can just invite other students as well remind each other and make sure to tune in uh, for this time of uh, you know uh, asking questions and uh, it's a you know wonderful time of learning together right okay let's pray and then we'll close father we thank you for this uh, for this time we thank you lord that we could gather together and um, Yes, Lord, this very important thing of what you brought about, Lord, that uh, and what you prayed and declared over us, that we may be one. Father, we thank you that we are different. We thank you that our calling is unique, our gifting is unique, oh God, everything coming from you. And yet, Lord, you've called us to be united, united in, Lord, lifting your name, united in serving, united in reaching out, God, uh, for the sake of the kingdom. And yes, Lord, 
uh, even as uh, Lord, you do this, Lord, we pray that each one of us in our own spheres of influence, whether with twos and threes or whether with hundreds and thousands, Lord, we pray that uh, we would work towards it um, under your guidance, Lord. And um, yes, Lord, I pray the Spirit of God that you would bring us together and knit our hearts together and let your kingdom come and let your will be done, Lord, wherever we are from, O oh Master. And uh, yes, Lord, to you be all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining in. Thank you, Pastor Serena, for sharing. Thank you, all pastors who answered, and uh, thank you for being here. God bless. Have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next week as well. God bless.